we have five plus years of experience into IT technical training, including SharePoint, administration development, Office 365, identity and access management, also worked as uh, SSO into SSO integration with multiple products like Okta, Pink, Petra, Ping One, Pouchrock. I have eight plus years of experience in the cybersecurity and IM technical training with product knowledge of Ping, Okta, One Login, Microsoft, Secure Auth, and RSA. I've also worked into and trained people and corporates into cloud platforms like AWS and Azure. Today's agenda. So today we are going to talk about IM as an introduction and then we are also going to cover authorization and authentication. We will slightly do a high level of what single sign-on is before jumping into Okta and then we'll do a little bit of SAML basics. I'll also try to cover OpenID Connect. That is also one of the key protocol and then walk you through introduction of Okta. Okay? The course curriculum here consists of introduction, single sign-on, concepts of SAML, OIDC, OAuth, WS Fed, form-based authentication, Okta universal directory, advanced group management, configuration of external directories, how are we going to connect uh, external directories to Okta. We are about to see how do we manage applications within Okta. We have multiple suites of applications that we are going to manage. Provisioning, custom application integration, workflows within Okta, how workflows are configured and they help individual perform authentication and the Okta policies and its framework. The duration, this course, the entire course, I mean what are you going to exactly learn within this course? It is Okta as a platform which easily adopts the latest apps, centralized user management and automate access workflows across cloud, on-prem and mobile applications. It also helps you integrate many applications like there are around six 100, 6,500 plus application and provision user around a million, roughly around a million on cloud and on-prem applications. Human resource information system, automate onboarding through offboarding based on HR updates and triggers. Whenever there is an update into any of the system, the sync, how do we perform those things? How do we manage them? Infrastructure as a service, I IAS. Securely connect IT and developers to public cloud computing services. Centralize identity and add strong multi-factor authentication across hybrid IT systems. So currently in the trend of the cybersecurity wherein systems are getting compromised how do we make sure that the users are have a validation that to a two level of validation before they try to access any of the application api gateway is one of the most trending thing in any cloud platform and then id proofing protect against identity spoofing with risk based authentication so all these are again a part of mfa multi-factor scope of the technology okta has emerged as a leader in identity and access management okta integration network has different services available under one platform including single sign-on that we are going to cover definitely multi-factor authentication mfa user management workflows apis and access gateways companies like nasdaq simmons hitachi t-mobile adobe etc have partnered with okta as their iem solution so you can imagine the vastness of okta and the robustness of how Okta is providing solution across multiple domains and across multiple industries. The IM Okta technical training certifications. Uh, so we have something called as an Okta certified professional, Okta certified administrator and Okta certified consultant. And the next level you have and then, then that is the level like a professional administrator and a consultant. And then you have a certified developer which deals mostly around uh, AP, APIs, SDKs and developers would mostly be interested. But if you are an administrator wanted to uh, do deep dive into the technical bits integration implementation, the above professional certification path will suit you more this is the course completion certificate that mind magics is going to provide you now I am Okta technical training some of the random topics that we are going to cover here would be cloud-based solution versus an on-prem solution API uh, how APIs can be used and then usually as a business analyst how do we think when we try to integrate any application perform a data validation before it is actually moved into the technical bits what are the questions that you need to ask how do we look around issues around onboarding any of the application into any system so that's a primary role of a business analyst so thinking like a business analyst is something that we are planning to cover here i am octa any technical training so there are a lot of multiple projects one of the key projects here would be salesforce sso integration integrate salesforce with octa sso to manage users centrally so we will definitely uh, help you with setting a lab within octa as well as in salesforce and then we will help you with a dev account octa dev console automate user onboarding through api so as as a octa being a cloud tenant there are a lot of usages of apis that that we are going to learn here and a few of the projects would involve playing around with these apis some of the technical training lab setup that we would need as prerequisite we need a developers console an enterprise console and azure vm for iwa and directory integration iwa is integrated windows authentication through which you actually perform sso a desktop sso so as such there is no system requirement because all are cloud based so you don't have you don't need a virtual a vm or something installed in your system we'll try to make sure everything is on cloud and we'll help you install everything the in terms of documentation and additional courses we will share you the session videos uh, the documentation useful references sample resumes resume preparation guide will be also be a part of the course uh, we'll walk you through or help you with some of the mock interviews uh, be it in, in the engineering section or be it in the implementation or as an analyst what from level one to kind of an architect level will help you so this is this was like a very overview wherein i try to cover details around how 
would help you sail through this particular training module and now i'm going to actually talk about little bit of what i am is what single sign on types saml and then deep dive a little bit higher level into the multiple topics that i'm going to cover in, in the entire duration of the course so i'm just stopping my sharing and i'll reshare again so now what is an identity an identity is the details of an individual for example your username your ids those are your identity who you are uh, what are you authorized to all these concepts is something that defines your identity identity and access management now there is your id you would have to enter any uh, location within your building you can go in try to swipe in multiple places but your card will work the first thing is security verifying your card that is uh, authentication is happening then you're trying to swipe into different window or doors into different swipe machine and you will only author be authorized to one specific door that you are a part of and that is something called as authorization so in order to manage your identity and the level of access that you have we use tools for example for identity management you use certain set of tools like sale point for access management we use tools like octa pink petrol authentication authentication is basically telling who you is proofing proving actually who you are and you say you are so what i mean by that is you must be saying that you are an individual your name could be sam but how do you prove that using an id or using a username and a password now whether your password is true or false that will again be validated either by the security guard or by the active directory authorization now once you know who you are it is the level of access that you have that is something we call as authorization again i am just going to touch very high level we are going to cover these things in detail and identity and access management is authentication authorization is something that you are going to deal within the course so uh, provisioning it is actually the initial start of a user life cycle time a user is provisioned or created within any system that is what we call as provision so right from provisioning to granting access to authorizing a user to performing auditing and then the deprovisioning that's what we define as a user life cycle management single sign on one of the primary topic why we need octa so single sign on is imagine you log you join any organization and you are given with a set of credential you log into one app or your system and from there boom you try to log into all 100 200 application or or set of application that you are authorized to with a single set of username and password that is called single sign on now how it is because of few of the browser functionality as well as the relationship between your idp octa and the application which we call as s trust that is already been built between the identity provider and service provider is actually facilitating you to do the single sign on now authentication it determines whether a user or who claim they they be usually done before authorization generally transmits id token okay i am not going to talk about the id token and open id now we are anyways going to cover them in detail authorization determines whether a user can or cannot access verifies whether access is allowed through policies and rules usually done after authentication that is when you are done with the authentication next thing is authorization what are we going to cover within saml we are going to cover federation sso reviews sso for single domain sso for multiple domain identity provider service provider what is saml now saml is one of the key important thing that helps you perform single sign so in that how do we perform single sign on one of the protocol i would say so security assertion markup language is saml and it actually tries to create a trust between application it in the sense octa tries to create a trust within an application and it transfers data and the data transfer happens through a saml assertion now there are different components of a saml and different components of a saml assertion now during the initial way when the trust are been built there are some data that gets exchanged that data is called a metadata now we are going to definitely go in deep and understand what a metadata file looks like how a metadata is what details are contained why is it encrypted there are different mechanisms which you have to use in order to encrypt it depends on the different multiple products that we are going to identity federation that is you being an identity provider as an identity provider or as an octa they will never i mean they will not have the details they would have if they are provision users but if they are not using provision they will not have a detail so where is the validation happening that validation is happening against the ad now even on the service provider side they should have certain details of the uh, users that is trying to log in so identity provider when it tries to fetch details from ad goes to the service provider and dumps the data there how is service provider validating what is the key important thing a unique identifier that the service provider should have in order to validate and authentic authorize a user because authentication will be done by the identity provider so this these all process and steps will be discussed in detail saml again a standard xml based message sent over https we have saml 2.0 that's currently running we also had 1.0 and 1.1 this is how an assertion would look like again it's it's a very high level we will use troubleshooting tools to understand how saml assertion and all those things would look like again it's a open protocol like the authorization protocol there are few components i'll again go in very high level we have components like resource owner resource server auth server client id secrets which are being shared so ideally it's we have a client we have a resource server resource owner and auth server and then the user trying to access 
uh, resource within the resource server. So whenever a user tries to access any resource, client actually does and actually request for a kind of a code to the auth endpoint. That is, that is the first endpoint that it hits. Second, the client again has to go back and then hit the token endpoint to request for a token. Now, how do we validate whether a user again? How do we do the authentication? So OAuth is a authorization protocol wherein uh, we have something called as access token. But when we use authentication, we have something called as OpenID Connect a layer on top of OAuth. That itself contains tokens, and the primary token it uses to authenticate a user is something is called as an ID token. ID token similar to a SAML assertion, not exactly but the information that a saml assertion contains the attribute we can configure the id token to contain the same set of information and that is where access token has less information of a user it just gives you a basic of what the user is authorized but an id token gives you all the detail of who the user is what are the attributes and detail of a user so that it can be again used for an authentication purpose okay? and then we have multiple four grant types for oauth or open id we are going to discuss them in detail and also talk about what is the best grant type that we use industry wide this is the basic law of a browser and an application trying to go to octas resource server and authorization server to actually request for a token and how the validation is happening and then what check happens on, on the different levels of a resource server on the authorization server and the token this is the overview of octa the octa dashboard and uh, we are going to give you access so here if you can see we have dashboard directories uh, application security workflows reporting settings and then here on the dashboard we can see the status of, of the apps that we have onboarded the, we can search people we can search application on the right hand side we can also verify the health of the directories that you are going to integrate and this is this is how a classic ui would look 